Man, what is happening, my YouTube family? Of course, it is your boy, Be New. And as you can see right now, I'm not whipping. I'm not driving as normal. Uh, and man, I tell you what, I had to make this video this evening instead of waiting for it in the morning to discuss this Lakers loss because I'm disgusted. I'm quite disgusted with this Lakers loss. And I had to chime in right now to kind of give you a preview of what we shall talk about on tomorrow's show. Now, tomorrow's show will be the more positive be new. The be new that you get in the morning time will be new. What's happening to my YouTube family, Blase, this and that, where I'm like, positive but damn all that right now because it's not time for no positive vibrations let me tell y'all something right now i'm sick and tired of frank vogel now the lakers got their ass whooped and i'm not gonna sit up here and pin this all on frank vogel that's something i refuse to do i'm not gonna pin this on frank vogel the entire loss because guess what players play the game coaches coach the game but the coaches cannot play for the players. We all know that. And if shots not falling and certain things of that nature is not going down for players, that's not on the coaches. But when your coach time in and time out does not put you in position to be successful, then that, my friend, is not a good coach. You have to to be able to take your piece. It's just like a general in war. You know who needs to be on the left flank, who needs to be on the right flank, who needs to come downhill, who needs strengths and weaknesses. So if you know strengths and weaknesses of your team, then you also should know strengths and weaknesses of your opponent. And that's something that I'm tired of not seeing from Frank Vogel. Like for instance, I'm just gonna give you a, a good example in my humble opinion. In my humble opinion tonight, why in the hell did Kent Basemore not get any playing time until the end of the game in garbage minutes? Now, granted, Malik Monk has been playing well. We understand that. But what the Lakers are lacking right now, and especially in a game like this, because you got to understand, the Lakers came out and gave you 38 points in the first quarter. They gave you 38 points in the first quarter. Now, after giving you 38 points in the first quarter, then you turn around and give what, less and less points. Then by the time you come out in the fourth quarter, what, you scoring 20? 20 points, getting outscored by 15 in the third, which the third has continued to be a problem. But back to my Frank Vogel issue, my point is, if you can put Kent Basemore into the game, you know he won the best, high, the best uh, college basketball defensive player of the year. So you know he is capable of playing defense. If he can't do nothing else, he can he can stick to your hip and put pressure on you. Time in and time out throughout the course of the game. Even Doris Burke kept saying that the Lakers could not keep ball handlers in front of them and they were able to get, get off the dribble every time to get around them, not just to make plays for others, but to make plays for themselves. How many times did Dennis Schroeder get to the lane and finish with an easy bucket, which he did that for the Lakers, and that's something that he's good at doing because he has great speed. Don't get me wrong. And if there's a pin down, then you're going to see that happen occasionally through the game. But time in and time out, if you continually getting beat down the floor, that means your man is not keeping them in front of you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Avery Bradley, he has been doing pretty good on defense, but obviously you have him on Tatum. He's too small. He can't defend him. There's another opportunity right there to have him base more who can play the two, who can play the three. You know, Tatum is 6'8", base more, more like 6'5", but at the end of the day, he can get up into him. He can be a lot more physical with him. And not only that, he could help guard Marcus Smart. Every time I looked up, Marcus Smart had a damn three-point opportunity. Stayed on the ground with a layup to the foul, and some of the calls were atrocious. But like I said, at the end of the day, LeBron James came back. He looked good. You could tell he wasn't worried by the look on his face at the end of the game. I'm still not worried. The Lakers are below 500. Let's not forget when the Heat were first assembled, they were 10 and 10 in the first 20. And LeBron James has missed a lot of games. So with all that being said, I don't really, I'm not really too concerned just yet. I know a lot of people are concerned. I'm not concerned just yet. Trust what I'm saying. It still all has to come together. The Lakers had something going there in the fourth quarter when you got Westbrook. When Westbrook kept coming down the lane before they switched up to putting Marcus Smart on him and he was just having his way, getting slashed and slashed and slashed. And that was giving LeBron a break while he was on the floor. But another thing that makes me question Coach, Coach Vogel and the way he coaches is, when LeBron got his uh, second foul early on 
in the in the second quarter, uh, he could have got his third foul. But instead of allowing him to continue to play, which LeBron James is not going to pick up a third foul that quick, it's still eight minutes, over eight minutes to play in the second quarter. So why put him on the bench? And then not put in an Anthony Davis. So I know Anthony Davis plays the whole first quarter. Usually you stagger it like that. But if you notice, the first quarter they had 38 points. That was with LeBron and AD together. LeBron ended up with a minus two, which was the lowest for the game of all starters, minus two. Anthony Davis was a minus 14, minus 15. That's because he was on the floor with other idiots, people that's not high, high, high basketball IQ people. And then you got LeBron James. All he has to do uh, – when Russell Westbrook is on the floor, he's standing over there and Westbrook is isolating and going and getting buckets. Well, LeBron might as well be on the bench getting rest. Why the hell didn't you have? First of all, you could have let LeBron keep playing when he picked up the second foul. And when you send him to the bench, why didn't you just go ahead and bring back in AD? And then Doris Burke even made a comment and says, well, now we must see how long the Lakers can uh, sustain uh, not having Anthony Davis and not having uh, LeBron James on the court at one time. Why the hell should they have to sustain that? LeBron James got two fouls. Let him play. If not, if you send him to the bench, bring in AD who hadn't had anything. Dude was still 26 or 27 years old. He's not 30-something years old. He can play extra minutes. He had already had a break of the first part of the second quarter. Bring him back in while LeBron get a breather. And then if he needs to come out, let him come back out and then bring LeBron in, dummy. Frank Vogel, you just don't make a whole lot of sense, man. But I'm going to speak on all the positives that I saw. On tomorrow's show, uh, I just had to come in tonight and say that, man, because I'm telling y'all, I say what's happened to my Inglewood, to my, not Inglewood, but to my YouTube family. You understand what I'm saying? What's happening to my YouTube family? And as always, man, it's been your boy, B. New. Man, I'm saying right on to the real. Much love to the haters. And I'm up out. Peace.